So for the day, my brothers and sisters in Christ, today I was reading in Isaiah chapter 2, where in verse 4 we're told that in God and God alone can war be turned into peace. God alone can turn weapons of warfare into weapons of peace. On October 24th, 1945, a few months after World War II ended, a bunch of people got together in San Francisco, California to create what we call the United Nations. Eventually a building would be erected in lower Manhattan in New York City for the purpose of trying to attain worldly peace. Billions and billions and billions of dollars have been spent in the last 77 years. And what is there to be seen? What are the results of all this human effort? More wars in the last 77 years than ever since the history of mankind. My friends, people are trying to find peace through human means, human ways. Two years ago, here in America, we had an election where some 150 million Americans went to the polls, hoping that a, a human being, a man, would bring peace to this country. And what do we have to show for it? More problems. Recently, there was an election in um, Georgia for a Senate seat where some $300 million was spent to gain a Senate seat. Could you imagine if 150 million people gave their lives to Jesus Christ in this country instead of voting for a person? And I'm not against voting. What about if $300 million was given to share the gospel across this country more and more? instead of giving it to a candidate who is just going to vote and do things contrary to God's word. My friends, what I'm trying to say is, is there's going to be no peace without God. This bumper stickers sometimes you see where it says, no God, no peace. That's K-N-O-W. And then it says, no God, no peace. N-O. Or some bumper stickers might say, no Jesus, no peace. K-N-O-W or no Jesus, no peace, and no. oh. What I'm trying to say is that biblically speaking, my friends, without God to Jesus Christ, there is gonna be no peace. Families are shattered across America. There's racial problems in America like never before. And the reason why is because people are trying to attain peace in their own way by human effort and it'll always fail. We're celebrating the Christmas season right now, the birth of Christ. And although he wasn't born on December 25th, probably was born in early October, according to ancient calendars. But we do celebrate the birth of Christ. Traditionally, historically, he was born and he would be called, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the Prince of Peace. We are told that Christ himself said in John chapter 14, verse 27, John chapter 16, verse 33, that he would give us peace despite all the trials that we might be going through in our lives. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse 16, we're reminded that God is the God of peace. My friends, there will be no peace unless we have peace with God in our own conscience, in our own lives through Jesus Christ. Christ told us in the Beatitudes and Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. If we are in Christ, my friends, we can be peacemakers. We can be sons of God, and we can help, by the grace of God, win others to Christ and help them to attain true peace. Not peace that comes from the bottom of a bottle or the end of a needle. Not peace that comes from stroking one's own ego and own, own prejudices and pride. No peace that comes from God through Jesus Christ, true peace. As Christians, as followers of Christ, we're told in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, if it be possible, be at peace with all people. It's very difficult in this day and age to be at peace with everybody. I work in a public school system as a custodian, and I can tell you from experience, every day I go to work, it's a very hostile environment. People are into gossiping, people want their own way, love is very cold, um, and basically we have, a lot of times, no peace. My friends today, I hope today's devotional video will be an encouragement to us to 
truly find peace within ourselves, with God, through Christ and Him alone, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 reminds us that when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have life and peace. But if we're filled with our own flesh, our own ego, our own selves, we're going to just reap death, destruction more and more in our lives. And I hope today we will learn to find peace through reading the Word of God, obeying it, meditate on the Word, prayer, fellowshipping with other good Christians, and just setting your mind on things above, not on the things of this earth. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today, Lord. May we be filled with peace from the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, in a world that is so full of hatred and destruction. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all today, my friends.